I should start out by saying that video was shot at uh, Synergy after the Around the World beer uh, that we drank quite a bit. And then I got asked to do a video, and I was like, uh, sure. And then I really had to watch the video to find out what I said. You pulled it off very well. It was so, very convincing. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that trick, by the way, Around the World beer has worked for a lot of the world's biggest film and television stars. <laughs> so you just follow it in their footsteps. So let's do what we did with our first two guests. Maybe just give a bit of background about yourself and then tell us a little bit about Lockton, if you would. Uh, Jamie Creek, uh, Vice President, IT Operations Lead, uh, based out of Kansas City. Um, been in IT forever. Love the Commodore reference. Yes. Um, hey, I had Pong. Oh, there you go. Um, been in IT for seemingly ever. Um, you know, not a lot of glamour there. Uh, came from some government work uh, before I joined Lockton. And I joined Lockton with the intent of staying 18 months. And I've been there 19 years, so... <laughs> You're close. Just a, it, you that's know, just a digit, right? Just, you know, a rounding error. Yeah, I just keep coming in every day. I, I can't figure it out. So, um, but Lockton is an uh, insurance broker. Yep. So for everybody in the room, that's super exciting work. Uh, not at all. Uh, insurance is there. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it is what it is. Um, Lockton, when, when I started in 99, um, they didn't have email everywhere. It was only the select few. Um, so in a very short amount of time, we've come a long way. Um, there's uh, uh, fastly approaching 7,000 people, uh, 80 offices worldwide. Um, just an incredible growth story. I like to argue that it's probably one of the best startup stories in the industry. Uh, started by Jack Lockton in his parents' basement 51 years ago. Really? Uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's an incredible deal. They just thought they could do it better. Uh, they're very serious about living service. You know, we, you, know you mentioned earlier about client service, and, and that's kind of the basis of the business relationship and client service. And, uh, you know, insurance professionals don't uh, adapt to change very well. Right. I know uh, that. If you can imagine. Uh, so, so being in the IT group uh, in an insurance company is, is pushing challenging. Pushing rock, yes. Yeah, pushing the glacier as, uh -huh. as we go. Mm -hmm. um, but that's, that's, you know, that's a little bit of locked and it's a little bit of me. It's interesting though, so I have lots of insurance clients and my, one of my favorite clients are, are insurance adjusters. And so you say, you know, it's a boring business, but I was just working with a lady who was one of the first people in Puerto Rico after the two hurricanes. And her life, was, she was an adjuster going around and helping people get the money to rebuild their homes that had literally been knocked down. And I'm standing there going, this is a good business. You're actually, now, but the problem is when some of the big companies get into it, it's just numbers. It's not about service and right. it's not about that you're actually making an impact on people. Yeah, the, the, the locked-in story is fairly interesting in that the three pillars are, you know, associates, clients, and community. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a lot of give back. There's a lot of, uh, you know, the 1% the thing that Jed mentioned earlier, is, it very reminds me of, of locked-in. We had a campaign uh, a year ago for our 50th anniversary to do 50,000 hours of, of community Fantastic. work by the associates. And uh, it was a lofty goal. We ended up doing 75,000 hours. Wow. So that was, that was pretty impressive. But, uh, but yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of one of their pillars of, of their success. So uh, talk about iGel, if you would. So what, what led to you meeting iGel and deploying it, and what, what's the deployment? Uh, everybody's got their horror stories. Uh, mine is <laughs> mine is pretty unique because I was actually on the ground, which is never a good sign. Uh, we were doing a, a pretty large move, uh, and we were also rolling out VDI at the same time. Uh, and our one-time uh, thin client manufacturer kind of led us astray, uh, and and model change, and it all kind of fell apart on the ground. So we wow. uh, we kind of struggled and powered through it. I was pretty upset with. Uh, where we were, and it was just like, yeah, we can't, we can't continue to roll this out across the U.S. Uh, so we kind of pushed pause and said, okay, we got to find a better solution. Uh, Choice Solutions, who, who's a partner and a client of ours, uh, just happened to be hosting a golf tournament, and we're like, hey, you, you need to talk to to Russ, and I'm like, yeah, Russ with who? And he's like, oh, yeah. Russ with Igel, I've never heard of him. And uh, just so happened after we'd had some swing lube and aiming fluid. Uh, we struck up a good conversation with Russ, and uh, he promised a few things, and we kind of called him on it and said, you know, I, that's BS. I, you know, everybody talks a good game. It can't be that good. Uh, and then he came in, and uh, we demoed it and set up a little test bed, and, you know, it was almost instant, and we said, okay, we're in. Cool. Um, part of the design of what we do in the growth that we've had is what we call office in a box. 
Uh, and back in the day, it was, you know, PCs, switches, routers, all this stuff. And we'd get a call on a, on a Monday that we'd have to open an office on a Friday. Mm. And it'd take three or four days. Uh, you know, a lot of people would be on the ground, a lot of work. Uh, and we knew that model just wasn't repeatable. And so as we got into VDI, as we call it Cirrus, um, you know, part of the challenge was we need to make it so simple that, that we can just roll in and do it in a few hours. And, and that's what we've accomplished with, with IGEL and VDI and, and what we've put together. Uh, we, we start up our, you know, we, stop, we start up offices in hours, basically, in business of days. All over the world? All over the world. Wow. Yeah, and, and it's to the point, you know, we don't have boots on the ground in a lot of these offices. We're, we're a pretty small IT shop, and, you know, we, we heavily rely on people in the field to, you know, be our hands and feet. Uh, and and with, with the IGEL product and, and, and UMS and, and all that, that really kind of has shaped what we do. It just occurred to me that if, you got, if we got all the customers here who are all global, Luxottica and Strayer, and said, hey, you should just share the resources to go in and you get it down to half an hour in office and you split the split pay the salary. Split the person. cost, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That, that's a good idea. Uh, you know, the, 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 the fun thing that we, we have that, that has really kind of popped up here recently is, is the, the cloud services gateway and, and how we, we are really kind of adapting to that. The, the in, insurance industry is really at a... Uh, crossroads from a disruption standpoint, this conference name is very apropos in that, that sense, is that um, how people are getting insurance to market has totally changed. You know, you don't have to go see an agent anymore. Right. There's, and direct to market is becoming a big deal. Yeah. Uh, and so brick and mortar offices are just kind of going away. Yep. Uh, and, and so remote work, work-life balance, all of that is played into our culture and is becoming a key impact of keeping quality talent. And so the, the gateway services piece was key to us. With, without it, um, it would, you know, you know, remotely managing one-off situations is not anything, any, but nobody likes to do that. Right. So, so that's really kind of changed the game for us as well. So when, uh, I apologize if this is a stupid question, but if you have an agent who's working out of their house, you can deploy to the level of one person in their home? Yeah. Yeah, we, we, we do that. We do that. Uh, I hate to say it. We do that probably, you know, a couple times a week sometimes. Wow. <laughs> Amazing. That's great. And so uh, just an interesting thing you brought up the other side is the business is changing because one of the things I know is that millennials coming in just don't, they don't actually have any interest in meeting my you know, 67-year-old or 70-year-old insurance agent, Phil. They don't want to meet ever a Phil. They just want to go online, get a good price, and move on, right? It's the same, it's the same as, as the, the university case earlier, yeah. is, is that, you know, we all had books when we went to college. At least I did. Um, we could didn't read, use them. too, I, did, I, didn't, I didn't use them, but, uh, but you know, they, they don't have books. Uh, right. it's, it's kind of the same thing. They want to go online. You know, type in you know their their risk scenario for property casualty insurance, and just get a quote and be able to buy it right then and right. there. So, right. so that model is drastically changing. And and so, how does the IGEL deployment help you with that? So, so with that, the the biggest thing for us is is putting you know is the talented people that are out there don't necessarily want to live in Kansas City or Atlanta or New York mm -hmm. or one of the offices we have. They might they might like Boise, Idaho. Mm -hmm. and that might be where they want to stay. And, My dream. Yeah, and, and it's like, well, we don't have an office there, so uh, it's pretty much ship them a thin client, get them connected. Uh, we do voice, we do the whole thing through there, and that allows them to be closer to their clients usually, mm -hmm. uh, as well as it, it just creates a, a better environment for them. They're, they're, you know, it's, it's getting the hooks into them to stay, and, and Lockton's really good at that. Where do you see it going? <coughs> um, it, it's, it's, it's a fascinating time. Um, AIG, those kind of players in the, in the carrier world are spending you know, a billion dollars on insure tech uh, over the next 18 months. Uh, there was an article just the other day that they're carving out $100 million on new projects. Nothing that's in the works, just new projects that they want to do in regards to insurance. So, um, what, sorry, what kind of projects? So, it, a lot of it is direct to market uh, for property and casualty, renter's insurance, things like that. There's, there's huge gaps where... Um, you, you normally would have to, to go, you know, work with a broker, yeah. you know, it's a slower process, uh, you know, flood insurance, that type of thing. Uh, and they're really starting to go more direct market where you just, you know, you put in key pieces of information, comes back with your quote for coverage, yeah. and they move on. And, and that is a dynamic change in, in our world. Um, so we have to compete with that. We have to be, uh, we have to be pretty agile. We have to be, you know, everywhere to everybody um, and, and you know, the, the any, any, any device 
well, you know, anytime, anywhere, any any place, and that that's kind of what we've tried to establish with with IGEL and 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 the back end stuff that we've put in place. Wow. So, uh, can I open up to questions and see sure. if anyone anyone have any questions for Jamie? I have to defer to oh, Blair. Steve again. I've got Steve back here. <laughs> Always count on Steve for some great question. Jamie, can you talk about the the um, the ROI that you've seen? and then how you see it going forward for the insurance to the ROI from implementing IGEL, you know, the cost savings, the efficiency, and how you are now gonna take that to, um, to the customer level and change the game there? Yeah, so for, for us, it was, um, we're very entrepreneurial. Every series, every office has their own P&L, and you know, putting in servers, things like that, adds a lot to the CapEx piece of that. So by pulling everything centralized, you know, we, we eliminated a lot of servers, a lot of things like that. So by office, we, we you know, really started pulling a lot of costs back. But we didn't start the project out to, to be, you know, about saving money. We were trying to do it cost neutral. We were trying to provide the same experience that they had today, just anywhere they wanted to go. That was kind of the rule. Um, but it turns out, you know, our, our CapEx savings is in, you know, the, you know, the initial four-year piece that we had was in the, you know, 7 to $10 million range. Um, and, and, it, and as we move that forward, that allows us to set up an office with, you know, if you think about it, if you're, if you're going to join Lockton and, and you're, a, you're a producer, which is what we call our salespeople, you know, there's a lot of overhead that you've got to cover uh, that first year, two years, three years. And just by eliminating the overhead of the IT portion of it, you know, really puts them in a better position. Um, it, it's less of a struggle, you know, if, if, if you know sales guys, they're, they're always, you know, beating down the doors and, you know, they, those guys, I couldn't do what they do. Um, but, but just that savings piece alone uh, of not having the hardware in play. Uh, the other piece it's allowed us to do is, you know, kind of change the real estate landscape. Uh, you don't necessarily have to be in the epicenter uh, of a city. Uh, you know, you can, you can, you can have a 20-person office and not really have, you know, you can have a, a you know, private workspace or a smaller workspace because half of your workforce is, you know, a, a remote team. Uh, so that, that's really where we see that cost piece uh, translating into our business side. Oh, Steve. <laughs> Follow-up question. Yeah, Steve, why don't you just come on up and sit at the <laughs> yeah. front? He'll be up there in the minute. back. And then you Do can you know have what's a interesting? Everybody's talking about this, um, you know, the Uber model. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I almost see, like, you guys, are you guys kind of moving forward, that kind of thing? Could that work, like a part-time agent? And do you see it going that way? Well, we're, we're, we're a bit more on the broker side, so, so we're not the direct agent per se. Um, but the concept of property and casualty, surety business, things of that nature, um, really do have that model kind of to it because, you know, if, if you were in the construction world uh, and had to get a, you know, a bid bond for a job, that, that process is still really ancient. There's, I mean, it's, it still has to be signed in blue ink. Um, I mean, these, these things haven't changed in forever. Uh, and as they've come on to, you know, e-signatures and things like that, and most states are allowed now, and just changing that model from days to hours to it's almost instantaneous, the same way in transportation, uh, certificates of insurance. You know, a lot of us in this room have our insurance card on our phones. Uh, but if you're a, if if you're part of a, you know, an over-the-road trucking group, uh, those those certificates generally are all sent back in bulk, and then they're distributed to the drivers. Uh, and now we're moving to, you know, all those being electronic. And you know, if you're on the road and you know you happen to pick up something else, or you're you're changing loads, and now you're going to work for a different group, you can actually get your online cert that way. And you don't have to wait. You can just, you know, download it and away you go. So that, that process is, is really, really shrinking. Hmm. It is an amazing industry. My, uh, my, Phil, my insurance agent, had to renew something. And, and he, you know, I got to go through the questionnaire. He said, I got to come and do this in front of you. I, Phil, I live at the same address. I still don't smoke. I, you know, nothing's changed. But it's, uh, the industry is a little slower to change sometimes than the customers. Great. Well, uh, thank you, Jamie, for joining us. That was a great story. Really appreciate it. Thank you. thank you so much. Big round of applause.